Environmental Geology, Chepstow to Clavity, Portland, Jamaica. Considerations for residents and public. Situation, bad roads, high landslide susceptibility due to rainfall and subsurface water flow, slope, earthquakes, or falls. Relevance, clarity and neighboring communities, Ginger Hill and Pleasant Hill, have 600 plus inhabitants, according to wikipedia.com. These inhabitants use the one way in, one way out main road. Seniors also reside within these communities. For commercial activities, coffee farming and Airbnb are two examples of the activities that support these community residents. Please note, the written manuscript of this work will be available on joinobfitness.com. Aims and objective of this presentation, to present some findings from conducted fieldwork and research in a way that is digestible for the public and community residents, specific to the geographic area of focus. This is his hoped will help to yield greater understanding of the geoforces or realities present and hopefully can help generate sustainable solutions that are harmonic as best as is possible for both the landscape and people that interact with it. Geology and water movement cross section, Chepstow to Clavity. The geology of this defined area is comprised of white limestone, alluvium, sandstone interbedded with mudstone, yellow limestone, and blue gray volcanics. These rock units generally are highly fractured or faulted due to earthquakes in the past. It is important to mention also that generally the volcanics and areas of yellow limestone and the sandstone mudstone are highly drained with water. In other words, there is a lot of water that is interacting with these rock bodies. I should mention that generally the water flow coincides with the flow of the faults that are present along the road that runs from Chepstow to Clavity. I would like to also add that there is an increase in the elevation as well as the slope steepness as you traverse from Chepstow up to Clavity. This change in elevation is as a result of previous earthquakes. This terrain map provides us with another view of the landscape relative to the cross section shown earlier. If you look at the top right of this map, you will see Chepstow highlighted. Specifically, that area is like in a basin. If you then now look at the road and follow that road, you will see where the terrain change and you will see where those lines in certain areas get closer to each other. That represents steepness that is basically increasing. And as mentioned, this increase in elevation as well as steepness has a lot to do with the fact that earthquakes would have taken place in the past. Subsection key points. Number one, Chepstow to Clavity Road is overlain and underlain with highly faulted and weathered rocks. Number two, the rocks I've mentioned receive consistent surface and subsurface moisture, water. Three, the increase in elevation and slope gradient from Chepstow to Clavity is due to past earthquakes. Environmental geology. Considerations of this cross section to road work. Chepstow to Clavity. This road, as mentioned, being highly drained and highly faulted, is a key ingredient for the road itself not being in good condition. It's also worth mentioning that because of 
the factors of the high moisture or the reality of continuous high moisture that it makes it hard for road work whichever should be done in terms of short-term or long-term solutions to be fully sustainable because the reality is moisture in of itself is a key ingredient for weathering rocks when you're going to add the fact that the rocks themselves are being faulted or fractured then it creates further space for the moisture to work its way into the rock bodies and if we're going to have tremors through earthquakes that too makes it easier for those rocks to basically fail in other words road blockage or further erosion of the road surface will be the result the thing is that this road is a very important road for the community residents of Claverty and others. However, the reality is that the geologic situation or the geo forces as they may be make it hard from an engineering point of view for long term solutions to be provided. So in this case, what needs to be the realistic way of thinking for the community residents is that in terms of their day-to-day -day, they obviously make sure that they have plans in place or contingencies in the event of let's just say adverse weather to find a way let's just say if they are out of their community to stay by nearby family members in other communities I did observe the usage of bikes by community members this is a great alternative to vehicles in the context of let's just say roads becoming impossible or there is a reduction in the available space for vehicles bikes is a suitable alternative of course there is a limitation of no shelter and in the context of the senior citizens this will be of critical concern especially for those individuals who are much more let's just say susceptible to adverse health or may have an emergency situation dealing with and having let's just say rainfall and the cold weather um, touching on their skin in the mode of transportation can become an issue but again in the context of the situation the bike is a suitable alternative Another thing that the community residents would have to consider is the usage of the traditional modes of, of transportation, such as the donkeys and the mules. I hope this is not taken in any negative way, but this is another reliable source in the event that the road is being blocked and let's just say it takes some time for the equipment to be transported up to the terrain to do the road clearing. All in all, the residents as well as the surrounding communities have to acknowledge that the geo forces and the geo realities that may as regards to what controls the nature of the roads will not go away. If it's a case that we're talking about having any form of sustainable solution from an engineering point of view, the thought that comes to my mind will be about leveling the road. But leveling the road and changing the landscape is not really sustainable and is not really a forthcoming solution based on what it is that we can see in terms of the geology and the geomorphology. So on that note, as best as is possible, these are the solutions provided as it is right now that the residents can apply and should think about applying for the long term, day to day, with their environment. Thank you for watching and listening. I hope the content provided was not too technical and it was easily digestible because that was the primary aim or among the primary aims. Do let me know uh, if this was of benefit for you and if you have any additional points in terms of let's just say the tips that would have been mentioned, do feel free to share uh, because at the end of the day, it's towards a benefit for the general public as well 
if it's a case that you would like for us to shed some light from a geologic point of view for an area in Jamaica that is nearby you, do feel free to share so that we may look into it. Thank you very much again for listening and watching. Do like, subscribe, share. Until next time, take care.